ladies, welcome to this week's Love Scene Treasured live broadcast. I am so glad that you're here. I want to welcome you as everybody is getting online. We're going to take a few minutes and just share some really great information with you. First and foremost, I want you to know I so appreciate you taking your time, tuning into our broadcast, whether you're watching it live or whether you're going to watch it at a later time. So it just means so much. So continue to leave your comments, share good things with us. As always, we want to know who's here. So if you're here watching the broadcast, give us a hello, give us a shout, give us some hearts, let us know where you're from. And if this is your first time listening to one of our broadcasts, just put in there, it's my first time. We really, really want to welcome you. And um, after the broadcast later tonight, I'm going to look at everything. I so enjoy looking at everyone's comments and seeing what is going on in your, wor in your world. We love knowing that. Um, I was just talking to our team. Okay, our team is here in the room with me. But they are like spread out. Hold on. I'm going to show you. Here they're coming. Come in. Come in. Okay, so we have team here in the room. Lauren, Steph, Tammy. Hi, everybody. Hi, ladies. We also have, say in the, say in the shot with me. We also have team members that are watching remotely. Heather, Kelsey, Angela, we're so glad that you're part of the team. I want to tell you what these ladies do because it's really, really important. They spend a lot of time praying for you, praying for the needs within your life, praying for women who are coming in um, as you share prayer requests. These women here, they pray for me, which is such a blessing, but they also pray for all of us. So, okay, they're going to be sitting around the room with me, so I wanted you to see who's here. I'm not sitting here by myself. Um, but, hey, listen, I want to invite you to a couple of things within our community that I think are really, really important. Number one, if you're new to our community, this is the place that we really want you to feel loved, seen, and treasured, which is why it's called that. Um, last week's teaching, I unpacked that in, in scripturally a little bit. If you haven't listened to that broadcast yet, I want to invite you to go ahead and do that because then you'll be able to see the heart behind why we've started a women's new women's virtual community, okay? Secondly, I want you to think about joining one of our amazing discussion groups. Okay, so what is a discussion group? I'm so glad you asked me. Thank you for asking. Okay, so our discussion groups are led by some really incredible leaders within the community. And what they do is they will take the teaching that we're going to share tonight, the scriptures that we're going to unpack tonight, and then in smaller groups, either through Zoom or Facebook, groups or phone calls or some are gathering in their homes in small groups as well, um, they're going to unpack that teaching a little bit more. It's a great opportunity to be able to share how God speaks to you or has spoken to you through the teaching and how that's impacting your life personally. Secondly, the thing I love about our discussion groups is that it also gives a place to be able to talk through what the teaching might have meant to you or maybe if you didn't understand part of it and you're able to talk about okay here's something that really meant something to me here's something i still am just kind of thinking through and lastly in our discussion groups we have the chance to pray together which is so incredibly important so i lead a discussion group our group last week was so sweet and it was some women that i hadn't been in a discussion group with previously but it was really so much like we had known each other for a really long time. The, the chemistry just worked, the community worked, and so if you are not part of one of our discussion groups but you want to be involved in one, put in the chat, I want to be connected. And okay, discussion group leaders, if you're on here, go ahead and invite them to your groups. This is really organic mm -hmm. and it's easy yeah. and because we're a virtual community, you can be anywhere geographically. I want to welcome one of our newest members, which I think it tra has traveled the longest place virtually to be here, which yes. is Sherry Bumstad. Okay, she has a different last name now. I think it's Avery. Sherry, I'm sorry. Okay, I've known her as Bumstad. She is with us from 
Zambia? Zambia. Okay, represent Zambia. Um, she is joining one of our discussion groups that meets on Saturday mornings because with the time change, she's able to do that. Okay, isn't that cool? So, go ahead and jump into one of those groups. It's a great way to make friendships and build relationships. They're having a hard time. They're ha oh, you can't hear me? I need to be louder. Let me come closer. Okay, what other things? Anything else, else upcoming in the chat before we get started with our discussion? Is that better? Is the sound better now, guys? Yes? I'm getting some okay. hearts, so I'm hoping that means... Okay, so. good. Okay. I will be loud. I'm, I'm Southern. I'm loud. I can be loud. I'll pretend like Lauren. We're in an LSU football game. Gator fans. We're coming for you. We start next week. <laughs> okay. Discussion groups. Okay. Last but not least, and we'll talk about this at the end of our chat too. She leads Women's Leadership Academy is starting October 5th. Monday, October 5th. We are having a preview night and... Um, what that's going to be is that's a chance for everybody who's interested in our Leadership Academy, which is an eight-week seminar where we'll share really great leadership principles. We're going to do a biblical teaching through the book of Esther, and we're also going to talk about the practical aspects of leading as a woman because we know that it's different leading as a woman. And so we've got to talk women talk in there, and so it's going to be really fun and vulnerable and some really great equipping information as well. Okay. All right. Do we have any questions or need anything before we start? Everybody on? Are you sharing where you're from? If you're new, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. Okay. Listen, as we begin tonight's teaching, um, we're going to talk about a story in 1 Kings um, chapter 17. So if you've got your Bible or your phone app, go ahead and, and get there. But one of the things we're going to talk about is a drought and a famine. We're going to visit a story where there's a drought and a famine happening. So I was thinking about this because I personally have not been part of a drought or a famine as described in 1 Kings chapter 7. Thank you, Lord. Not that I ever want to. However, we have to look at what we went through with COVID. And there was such a drought and famine in our own world that we're living in. Why? Why, ladies, why? Okay, I want to just unpack this just for a minute. We were suddenly in this situation where there was a lack of toilet paper and paper towels. Okay, now... Okay, I know. Now here's here's my conspiracy theory about why people were hoarding those things. As you can see, we've gone through COVID. Nobody's needed it. Has anybody needed 10,000 rolls of toilet? No, no. Okay, how many of you still have a ton of toilet paper in your garage or in your basement or just raise your hand, just own it? Oh, Stephanie does. Stop, no, hoarding. Okay, let me tell you. I know, why? It made no sense to me that it was toilet paper and paper towels, but here's what I think happened. I think that there was someone far away from where we live, I don't know where, somewhere in the United States, they were in Costco, they started putting toilet paper and paper towels in their cart and someone else saw it. Yes. Power of suggestion yes. is so strong. Somebody had a strong toilet paper game happening in Costco. Yes. Yes. And then someone else saw it and said, oh my yes. gosh, and COVID is coming. Home. I need toilet yes. paper. I need paper towels. And yes. then it was on the news. And before you know it, there were people wrapped around Costco with 10,000 pounds of toilet paper. Now, let me tell you why this did not originate in the South. And I have a theory. In Louisiana, I am from New Orleans, Louisiana. Lauren is from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So we can speak about the Louisiana. Staff yes. lived in Florida. And Arkansas. In Arkansas, Tammy mm -hmm. lived in Florida. Okay, so we can all talk about it. Now, in an evacuation series, or if a hurricane was coming, we were in the grocery stores, but we were not buying toilet paper and paper towels. Oh, no, ma'am. Oh, no. We were making sure that we had food to eat. Yeah. Because we, like, took the time to make big, giant pots of coffee, yeah. a big, giant pot of what? Lauren? Gumbo. Gumbo. Jambalaya. Yes. Okay, how about chips and salsa? Why were chips and yeah. salsa like Good empty question. in the store? Good question. Toilet yeah. paper? Come on, we have to eat. 
So that's why. Okay, so my theory is that this did not begin in the South. This began somewhere else with someone at Costco, and it was the power suggestion. And so we've just come out of this. Like, seriously, though, but the restaurant's closing, our school's closing, all of that. It's like our whole world just got turned upside down. So if you will, we have been in a little bit of a season of a famine and a drought as we know it as Americans now. Outside of America, no, that's not even respected because we have so much, right? But think about that. If you still have toilet paper in your basement, I, I want to I just want, just return it to the grocery. Because somebody else is looking, <laughs> staff is looking for some more. So just, I have plenty. just return it, just return it. it for my okay, how many in our chat have got, have, Raise their hand that they still have loads of this. Stuff. Someone's on their last box. Oh, so yeah. okay. So you can, let me know. Staff has some. I can send her some. She staff did box though. Oh, box. box. Okay. Not roll. How Not many rolls? rolls are there? Okay. <laughs> Crystal said she stocked up on rice and beans and lots of coffee. Rice and beans and lots of coffee. Yeah. Okay. Okay, all the flour that yes. was gone. Yes. Flour. Okay, <laughs> let me ask a question. How many of you, even in this room, <laughs> bought all the flour? And you're still baking. Raise your hand if you're still baking, or if you've gone back to buying it. Raise your hand if you're still baking. No, no I sourdough bread. I didn't start baking. I did buy lots of flour. Lauren, Lauren, Lauren did. Baking, baking powder. powder. Baking powder. Are we still using it? Yes. Oh, I use baking powder all the time. Okay. All right. Staff. Okay, yeah. hey, staff. <laughs> we're coming to your house. Okay. If there's ever a drought in Framen. <laughs> all right. Are we ready? Are we ready now? Any yes. questions or anything before we get into the teaching? Okay. All right, let's look at 1 Kings chapter 17. We're going to start in verse 7 through 16. And let me set the stage for what we're going to talk about tonight. The prophet Elijah is on the run. He um, has declared a famine and a drought as a punishment for the people who were not obeying God, were being godless. I mean, it was, it was a hot mess in the land. And so... The Lord, in order to get their attention, brought drought and famine to them. And so Elijah is in this place. The Lord was directing his steps. Like you can see in 1 Kings, he's, he's, the Lord is saying, go to the brook, or go to the city, or go to this place. And he's going there. Right before this, this story takes place, Elijah is by the brook, and the Lord sends ravens to feed him meat and bread in the morning and at night the ravens are coming okay how crazy is that but this is how specific the word of the lord was to elijah and how specific the lord's provision was for elijah that he had ravens think about that ravens are carrying meat that they usually eat and they were not it was a complete miracle of god and so they would bring a little bit in the morning they bring a little bit at the end and then as the the text continues it says that then the brook where he was started drying up. And so with the drying up, there was no more water. So what happens is that the Lord is now redirecting Elijah again, which is where we're picking up the story in 1 Kings 17, starting in verse 7. And it said this, Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him and it said, Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So before he was being supplied with food by ravens, and now the Lord is saying, okay, go to this town. There is a widow woman there who is going to take care of your needs when you get there. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called her to... He called to her and asked, Would you bring a little water in a jar so that I may have a drink? And she was going to get it. He called again, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. And here's her answer. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jar. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have 
and bring it to me, and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. The jar of flour will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain in the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and the woman and her family. And I love this. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Oh my gosh, what a story. Okay, so as we look at the story, there's so many things about this that I think are words for us for today. I know when we read stories like this, we can kind of read this and go, okay, stuff other than our COVID toilet paper crisis, we haven't really been in a famine, we haven't been in a drought, but with the word of God, there's always something really, really relevant that he has to say for us, no matter if it happened in the Old Testament or New Testament, Revelation, Genesis, his word, because of his spirit, makes his word come alive in us. And so in this, there are several things I want us to look at. Number one, that the Lord sent Elijah to, the, to a woman who was in great need in order to take care of his needs. Now think of this. As Elijah is going, he had been fed by birds, which is so random. I kind of, do, does anybody think about the, the movie, The Birds, where the birds start coming out with the ravens? They're kind of dangerous birds. But here he had been fed by ravens night and day, and now the Lord said, I'm going to send you to a woman who's going to feed you. Wouldn't you think, wouldn't you assume that if the Lord said, I'm going to send you to someone that's going to feed you, that you would show up in this palatial palace yeah. with a banquet table full, mm -hmm. with lots of things in the storehouse mm -hmm. during the famine, right? No. What he does is sends her to this widow who he finds gathering sticks by the side of the road. Let me tell you what that tells us about her in the culture. She was so impoverished that she didn't even have firewood, which meant that she was, like, not only was she poor, she was really, really poor. She was really, really destitute. So much so, in order to even build a fire, she had to go around town and gather sticks that she found lying on the road. And so here she is, and as scripture tells us, she is gathering firewood, fire sticks, in order to take the last little bit of flour and oil that she has because she realizes that she and her son are not going to survive the famine and the drought. And so I want us to think about that the Lord's assignment was not meant to destroy her. It wasn't meant to take the very last that she had. It was actually meant to rescue her. And she did not even know. Think about, ladies, all of us, we care for our families, we care for friends' families, we have cousins, we have relatives. If you know that you are about to say goodbye to your family and you're gathering sticks, I mean, think of your mindset and the mindset of, uh, or your heartfelt attitude or emotions that you're going through as you're gathering sticks to build one last fire in order to provide the last thing for your family. And so here she is, and the Lord assigned her as the one who would feed the prophet when she had nothing. Not only did she have nothing, she had less than nothing. And so the assignment was not meant to destroy her, which I love. Mm -hmm. And God's assignment over us is never meant to destroy us. No matter how we look at it, and no matter how desolate times may seem, okay, those of you that have diagnosis, those of you that are going through really unbelievably tough times where you cannot see the end, I want this word to encourage you. God sends an assignment to you. It's always to provide a miracle and provide something that you cannot see at the time. And so here was this widow as well. I love her answer to him, though, when she, okay, so first he's like, oh, can I have some water? Can I have a little water? So she went and got the water. So she probably had a little more supply of the water, I would imagine, because she gave that without hesitation. Mm -hmm. However, when he said, and some bread. Oh, and by the way, some bread too. <laughs> and then she's like, okay, time. Um, I'm okay with the water, but you're asking me for bread. Mm -hmm. and, and she said, I have no bread. 
She said, but I have flour and oil. I have a handful of flour and I have drops. I mean, she's got like a, a, a scant, amount of, scant amount of oil in the bottom of her jar. I don't have any bread, but she had flour and oil. And I was thinking about that. You know, when we are in seasons where we're having to trust God through really, really hard times, when let's say it's a personal famine, let's say it's a personal drought, our spiritual drought, or our families are just going through really rough times, which all of us go through seasons that are really, really difficult. It is hard to see the provision because all we think about is what we don't have, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We think, oh my gosh, I don't have, I don't have this. Because no, she said, I don't have bread. I don't have bread. Mm -hmm. But I do have flour and oil. Well, you, okay, she didn't have the finished product, but she did have provision for the raw materials. Mm -hmm. And so I think that as we're walking through things that can be really difficult, when we don't see the finished product, we kind of get blinded by that and we stop seeing any potential, right? It's hard to see the potential when we don't have the finished product sitting in front of us. Mm -hmm. And so she's like, I haven't baked any bread. I don't have any bread to give you. And so, but she had flour and oil. And that God did not, I love that God did not miraculously provide bread for her. You know, in the, in the, when the Israelites were in the desert and they were wandering, and the Lord dropped manna down from the sky, that was the finished product. Mm -hmm. you know, but it was enough for the day. But the Lord didn't just give her loaves of bread, didn't fall from the sky. Although the ravens, hey, where were those ravens? They weren't working. They weren't bringing any more bread and water, they, or bread and meat. They could have brought some, dropped some bread down, but that's not what God was doing. You see, whenever we are puzzled by the way that God provides, we have to know that there's something deeper on a deeper level that he wants us to understand mm -hmm. about him and his character or he's about to do a miracle that we have not seen before. You know, so many times, I don't know about you guys, but I will look at an impossible situation in front of me, and I will go back to my memory of the way God worked it out the last time. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, God, okay, we got it. I see how you worked the last time. Okay, I've got faith for that. I've got faith for that answer, because it's been tested already. But what about when God wants to bring it about in a new way? And he doesn't come through. I mean, here she is. God had not come in through. Notice that she says, your God. So she doesn't even know the Lord. Mm -hmm. Your God has sent you. She didn't say, my God has sent you. So here she is in this moment of need. And that God was about to come through in a miraculous way, but it was not going to look like something she had ever, ever seen. I really believe that is a word for somebody, and maybe several somebody's watching tonight, that you are looking on the horizon and you're waiting for God to come through in a miraculous way like he did in the past. Mm -hmm. And I think what he wants to say to you is, stop looking for that answer. Mm -hmm. yeah. I am about a new work. Mm -hmm. I'm about, I am the creator. Yeah. I will create a way to do this that you have not seen before. Mm -hmm. And what that does, ladies, is that it keeps us depending upon him rather than depending on our own experience yes. or the past and like okay we've got it that doesn't require faith when we've got it that's not faith that's our that's our own work in there yeah. but when we don't see it and he hasn't done it before then it's something new that he's teaching us in that moment and we don't always realize our potential until there is a time of famine yeah. okay we don't always realize, isn't it true? And I, I mean, I've just come through a season where it's like things that I thought were going to come in a certain way, they didn't, or even going through COVID. You know, that really made me have to rethink the way that I operate, rethink my value system, things that were really important to me that no longer were available. But also when God shifts gears on us, and he kind of takes the rug out from under us, if you will. It's like, oh, oh I, thought, I thought I had this. Oh, look, I don't have this at all. I don't even know what I'm doing right now. And there's many times like that. But what it does is it builds our dependence upon the Lord. And it says, you know, I, I, don't even, I don't even think the things were inside of me that the Lord has been unpacking recently. 
And it's almost like I've said so many times in the last several months, oh, I remember me. Okay, I remember. I remember this part of me that the Lord is bringing about. And so that's why famine serves a purpose. Mm -hmm. I love the lady's answer, the widow's lady answer, when she tells Elijah, when he's asking her for bread, she said, notice, I have a handful of flour. So what is that? Like a fourth of a cup? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Half a cup if you have a bigger hand than mine. Mm -hmm. A fourth of a cup. And I have this little bit of olive oil. You know, she measured. She measured. Mm -hmm. You know what that told, tells me about her is that she was counting backwards. She was counting backwards. She looked in her reserve and, and saw the amount of flour and oil that she had. And she knew how many days they were able to survive on that supply that she had. And so can you imagine she had a son? Her saying, okay, four more days and we're out. Three more days and we're done. See, she was counting backwards. Two more days and here was the day when she encountered Elijah was the last day. She knew that she was about to measure out the last bit of the flour that she had in supply. And what did God do? He multiplied it. He multiplied it because she was measuring. You know, and that's something I, I really want us to think about, how we measure things in our lives. When we look at what we have, and we say, oh gosh, I only have a handful. I only have this much. Or I, I'm good. I, I don't have to refill my gas in my car for six more days because I've got this much. You know, we measure things. But what do we do when we measure things, it causes us to have to compare things. Mm -hmm. Compared to what I had before, I've only got this much. Compared to what Lauren has, I only have this. Compared to how much toilet paper Stephanie has <laughs> in her garage, I only have, I only have this much. <laughs> right? But it causes when we measure, we compare. And that can be such a trap because what it does is it takes our eyes off of realizing God's multiplication of his provision and it puts it on what we have compared to what someone else has, which is a slippery slope. Comparison mm -hmm. will rob joy, as yeah. we say a lot. Comparison will rob joy. But she counted backwards. How many days were they left to die? And the, notice what the, the Elijah says to her when she says, I only have this much flour. I only have this much oil. The first thing out of his mouth is do not fear. Mm -hmm. Do not fear. You know, I imagine, I mean, obviously he's prophetic because he is a prophet. But prophetically, I'm imagining her looking into her eyes and just seeing this terror in her eyes as he's asking her to give the very last that she has. Meaning that not only is she not going to have supply, her son is not going to have supply if she does this. And he says to her, do not fear. Do not fear. That's such a timely word for us as we are looking on the horizon or as we're all maybe in situations that are fearful or that are unknown. And it can be really easy to look at what's in our hand and our measure of flour in our hand and can't you almost hear the Lord saying, do not fear, do not fear. You know, the Lord had another plan for her that she was not aware of at that point. And so what happens that uh, she goes Next, she bakes the bread, she brings it to him, she has enough for she and her son. Now, in her mind, she does not know God. She had not been fed by ravens like Elijah had, so she had not had experientially this, these miracles happening. But the prophet said, okay, your flour will not run dry. But so she has to empty her jar, empty her jug of oil, and then wait. And not knowing if tomorrow was she was going to die, maybe it was a fake, you know. And so here she wakes up the next morning. And here's what I love about this story. Is when God did not supply 50 loaves of bread or 20 pounds of flour. You know what he did? He put enough for the next day. And so she had to, in faith, and probably in fear. Because, you know, isn't that true? Okay, let's just talk about this for a second. We approach faith with fear sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Because it's like, if we think that we have faith and no fear at times, I, 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 I don't know of a time that I haven't when I've really been called to trust God in some big ways. I am, I am going, I think I can, I think I can. You know, it's true. It's, I think sometimes we beat ourselves up as believers if we don't have this big giant faith without emotion or without any fear or trembling or worry or anxiety. Those things surround our faith, but they shouldn't keep us from pressing through to faith, which is the point of faith. Just keep pressing through and saying, God, in my will and my emotion, I'm going to believe that you're coming through, but I am afraid. I'm afraid. So she had to wake up the next morning. Imagine her having her jug in the jar, reaching her hand in. She had to reach her hand in to see if it was so empty, and it was not. And she had supply for the day. And she had supply of oil miraculously. Can you imagine what that did to her heart when she put her hand in, knowing she emptied it out? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe the first day, maybe she thought, oh, maybe there were some grains, maybe it fell to the bottom, maybe I didn't empty it all out. But what about the second day, and the third day, and the fourth day, and the fifth day? Every day she woke up. Look what God was doing in her heart in that. He was teaching her, I am your provider. I am your provider. And so it, we watched this beautiful story of this woman being taught by the Lord day after day after day as she's depending upon him for flour and oil and I love that the other thing I want us to look at in this is that irony that the Lord would call her to be the one who provides for this mm -hmm. and you know as I thought about that and I, I went outside um, this morning and I, the Lord just gave me this beautiful picture of, of what I'm about to talk about um, so as we were talking two weeks ago, we were it was snowing outside. Remember we took the camera, there was snow, we had the snowstorm. So out on my patio, um, I had this really cute little tiny garden that I had going just for fun. And um, so I went outside and I covered my plants and everything and some of them died, some of them made it, some of them halfway died. But I have these little tiny pepper plants and half of the plant is dried up and dead. I'm going to post the picture of this later. You guys remind me. Yeah, remember how we remember to do that. Half of the plant is completely, it sticks and the, the leaves are brown and they're crisp and then there's a little bit of green. But the plant is covered in these little tiny peppers. It was bearing fruit mm -hmm. even though it was in a season of drought. What had happened? And you know what I think, what I really want us to think about is so many times we don't believe that we can truly thrive in our ministry and thrive in our lives if we are going through a season of drought or we are maybe frostbitten, like my poor little plant. But you know what? I have found the truth to be told is that God will take us and when we are walking through some of the most difficult seasons, it is the time my heart is most tender to the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's the time prophetically I'm hearing from the Lord. It's the time that I am more compassionate to other people and what they're going through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so don't think that your life has got to be sunshine and roses and, and it's the spring of life for God to use you. And I really felt that word strongly for several women that you've kind of got, you've got what God has placed inside of you on hold because you're waiting for your plant, if you will, to be in full bloom in spring, but God wants to use you right where you are. It is possible to bear fruit in some of the un most unfruitful seasons that we've ever walked through. Yes. Not because of us, because of what he is able to do with the, those seasons in our life. So I want to just encourage many of you in that. Um, as we are wrapping up our teaching tonight, I want to um, just kind of share one last truth with you, that as the woman, I want us to go back to when the woman had to put her hand again and again and again in her jar, in her, in her jug, in her jar, with the, her flour and her oil, with her physically had to, having to reach into that, that every time she put her hand in, in faith, if you will, her hand came up full. 
her hand came up full. You know, every time that we reach out to the Lord and we're trusting Him and we're standing in faith for something, He never leaves us empty. He never leaves us desolate. He will provide peace. He will provide um, a lack of anxiety. He will provide His Word over us. He will provide other people in our life to encourage us in those seasons. Mm -hmm. And because when we walk through times of famine or drought, and the Lord has brought it, right? The Lord has divinely brought a season for us where it's like, oh my gosh, this doesn't make sense, but we are in a season of drought and we're in a season of famine. If the Lord has brought that, with that comes his provision and his anointing, okay? And so when we think about the two elements that she had, the bread and the oil, Jesus said, John 6, 35, and Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never grow hungry. They will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And the oil that she is with, you know, that represents that oil of anointing. When we walk through seasons that God has anointed for us, he has anointed us, meaning that he's covered us. You know, when they would anoint people in the Old Testament, they would take oil and pour it on the top of their head and it would drip down their whole body. It wasn't like the little anointing off dots that we do now. You know, keep, keep our hair fine. They would just pour it all over them. And so I want to just encourage us as we close that if there is a season that you're walking through that has been really, really tough and has been really, really difficult, know that Jesus, the bread of life, the very bread of life, has got you. You are not alone. You are not abandoned. You are not forgotten. As we talked about last last week, you love seeing you are treasured. And that he has anointed you, meaning that he is going to provide everything that you need in order to come through this. I want to also encourage us that if you're looking for God's answer, I really want to challenge you to go back and ask the Lord, okay, Lord, if I'm looking at this through the wrong lens or I'm trying to take the past and make it fit into this puzzle, expand my vision of you, expand my belief in you so that I can see you clearly as I walk this out. And lastly, I realize that there may be many of you that you are sitting and you've got an empty jar and you've got an empty jug of oil and you're just a little bit paralyzed by it, maybe a lot paralyzed by it. I want to encourage you to reach in like the woman. Just reach in. Just keep reaching. Keep believing the Lord. Reach in and be able to trust Him in whatever situation that you're walking through. In fact, if that's you and you're in a season of, re of you're just like, okay, I need to start reaching again. Or I need to start reaching for the first time. I want you to just put that in the comments so we can know how to pray for you and just say, I'm reaching. Just put it right there in the comments and we're going to know how to pray for you in that season. Listen, there's always times that the Lord will bring those empty vessels right in front of us where he wants us to be able to turn our eyes off of our circumstance and turn our eyes onto him, knowing that he is our provision, he is our protector, he is the one who's going to, in due season, bring about his will and plan for our lives. I want to pray for us before we close tonight's teaching. And if you would just, in your moment, just bow your head and close your eyes right there in front of your phone or your computer and pray this, pray with me as we close. And so, Father, I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you that your word is alive. Lord, that it cuts through all the things we, we believe that are not true. Holy Spirit, come. Lord, I pray for the women who are reaching right now, who've got the empty vessels sitting right in front of them. Lord, and in faith, they're going to reach out and reach in and be able to see your provision. Father, I thank you that you are faithful. I thank you, God, that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask, think, or imagine. Father, change our imagination. Lord, open our eyes to be able to see the ways that you want to come through that maybe we haven't experienced yet, Father. 
Father, surprise us. Father, with your presence, surprise us, Lord, with your answer. And Father, I pray for those who are watching, Lord, that maybe don't even know if they have a relationship with you. Maybe like the woman, Lord, I, I, I think I know you, but I'm not sure if I know you. Ladies, if you're watching this and you have that question in your heart, I want to invite you to pray a prayer of belief with me to invite Jesus to have a personal relationship with you, to become your father like this woman, this beautiful widow woman who, who did not know Christ. But as she saw him working, and as she heard the word from the prophet, she believed and she saw miracles happen in her life. And so if that's you, I want to just invite you to pray in your heart this prayer along with me and just say, Dear Jesus, I ask you to become my father. I ask you to forgive my sin and to help me see you as Lord and Savior. I receive your gift of eternal life that you paid on the cross when you died for my sins. I thank you that you rose again and you have victory over every area in this world. And I trust you and I believe you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey ladies, if you prayed that prayer with us for the first time, Put that in the comments or either private message me so we can know. I want you to know that is the most exciting decision that you can ever make in your life. And with his presence comes his peace. And so I want you to know we are praying for you. I hope you have enjoyed tonight's teaching. I'm so honored that you took your time to tune in. I know you're busy. Like, I know we're busy. We're busy. We're busy. So thank you for making time. Thank you for joining our community. Hey, listen, our community is open to all women. We have young women, we have more mature women, we have everything in between. And so this is a place that we have created in order for women to come and have a safe environment, have a safe place, but also receive really great encouragement through the Word of God and through receiving prayer for things. If you have a prayer request, and you need prayer in your life, put that in the comments. We take that really seriously and we spend time praying over those needs and journeying with you as you're trusting the Lord. Um, invite your friends to be part of our group. It's not too late. They can join now and listen to the broadcast. Our broadcast is shared on our page. It's recorded there until eternity. I don't know how long it stays. It'll stay until it's not there anymore. Um, if you're not part of a discussion group and you want to talk through this, this teaching with someone, put in your chat that you want to be part of a discussion group, and one of our discussion group leaders will invite you right in because you're welcome. Okay, mark your calendar, October 5th, Monday, October 5th. She leads preview night. That is going to be so much fun. I'm really going to talk about what our Leadership Academy um, contains and how we're going to do that. How we're going to teach it. It's a Zoom call for eight weeks, but let me say this, ladies. Let me tell you why. I'll take a second. I'm going to tell you why I'm passionate about this. Because when we were created, the Lord put gifts inside of us. He put leadership inside of all of us, men and women. Every everyone He created has leadership inside of them. You are leading in some capacity right now. Whether you're leading in your school. On your job, in your families, in your neighborhood, in your community, you're leading. And so we want to be able to recognize those gifts, encourage you in those gifts, help you understand your purpose. Why are you here? Guess what? You have a huge purpose that I believe only you can fill. And so as we go through the Women's Leadership Academy, we're going to study the book of Esther, which one of my favorite studies of all time. And we're going to talk about why your leadership matters, not just to you, why your leadership matters to the kingdom of God. It is necessary, and you are necessary to his kingdom. So we'll be sharing more about that in the days to come. If you've got any questions or comments, leave those in the chat for us, and um, we, will, we will follow up with you.
All right, I want to thank you again for being part of tonight's teaching. Whoop, whoop. Second Ooh, yeah. week number two, yeah. our teaching number two, we did it. Yeah. Thank you so much for being part of this. Know this, know this, know this if you know nothing else. You are loved, you are seen, you are treasured. We love you, we're praying for you, and we will see you in two weeks. All right, Lauren's going to turn our video off now. Bye, guys.